will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome, my brothers and sisters, to our live broadcast on this Resurrection Sunday morning in which we celebrate the risen, yes, I said risen Savior, to God be the glory for the great things that he has done. Join with me in a word of prayer. God, we bless you. We thank you. We magnify your name for who you are. You are great, mighty, awesome, and worthy to be praised. We celebrate you. We thank you, Lord God, and we have reason to celebrate because today represents a day of victory. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for what you endured for us suffering, bleeding, and dying, but we thank you, Lord God, that victory when you got up on from the grave on Sunday morning. So we rejoice and we, we celebrate because, because you got up from the grave. We too have victory. So God, we thank you. Bless God this, this worship experience. God, we pray, Lord God, that you would anoint afresh, Lord God, all of your participants. We pray, Lord God, that your word will go forth at this hour and all who tune into this broadcast will be blessed by their presence, God. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name that we ask you all. Amen. Amen. Join with me. There's a great hymn of the church. What a fellowship. What a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Amen. <laughs>
safe uh, arms, safe hands, amen. And even in times like these, amen, we can lean on Jesus, amen. At this time, I'm going to ask Deacon Person if he would lead us to the throne of grace, amen. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that we can once again call your name and pray. Oh Lord, that you are a prayer answering God. For what you've done in times past, what you're doing right now, and what you're going to do in the future. We thank you, Lord, for this Resurrection Sunday, a day to celebrate and recognize the victory that Jesus had over death at the grave, how the grave couldn't hold it. And then when he arose, he said, all power is in my hand. Grave, death, praise your steam. Grave, praise your victory. And we thank you, Lord, that because he's been victorious over death, that we have, we have salvation. We think about what Jesus went through, how he hung, bled, and died, how he was in anguish, suffering, pain, all of this so that we might be redeemed. We, we, your word says that God commended his love to us by allowing his only begotten son to die for our sins. You told us that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that because of Christ, we've been declared righteous. That because of Christ, we've been justified. That because of Christ, we know that when time has been, it won't be no more. And it's your turn to call and now our turn to answer. We know that you have prepared for us a home eternal in the heavens, a home not made by hands, a home where we can praise and worship your name for ceaseless ages. We thank you, Lord, for technology that's allowed us to gather together in corporate worship. You say if two or three are gathered together in your name, that you'll be one in our midst. We just thank you, Lord, for blessing us the way that you have. We pray, Lord, that you manifest your presence in our midst. We pray, Lord, that you will bless Pastor Nichols in a very special way. We thank you for him. Please continue to use him to uplift your name and to extend your kingdom. Please bless him, bless his mother, bless his wife, bless his entire family. And we know, Lord, that so many people are on our sick and shut-in list, on our prayer list. We just pray, Lord, that you would address each and every individual need. We know, Lord, that you can you can take care of those problems, and we just ask you to please just have mercy. And so many of us, are, so many have been stricken by this by, by, by this coronavirus. Although we pray, Lord, for those families who lost loved ones, we pray, Lord, that you would comfort their hearts and you would abide with them. And we pray, Lord, for for those who are still suffering with the disease right now. We pray, Lord, for those who are treating them as well. Oh, we need your help each and every day and each and every hour. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to watch over us, protect us, and keep us. For we know we can't make it without your help. Lord, we love you, and we, we can't make it with you without your help, Lord. We just pray that you would continue to be with us. And we pray, Lord, that you would continue to use us in such a way to uplift your name. For we realize that if you be lifted up, that you would draw all men into yourself. Lord, we just thank you for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, back in the day, back in the day, uh, when I was growing up, we we did something that we don't necessarily and normally do uh, a whole lot these days. But God has been good to us, even in the midst of all that the challenges that we are facing, even now. A a amen. Uh, and even though. I hear reports, uh, you know, on the news, uh, bad reports. I also hear good reports. A a amen. And, and that's that's a that's a word for us. That even through, even though through what's going on, God is still working. God is still moving. God is still showing Himself strong and mighty. A amen. And, and I know there are a few uh, who are gathered with us here today, uh, including Sister Margaret Payton, uh, Deacon Miss Payton. Who, 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 who I would love to share testimony. A, a, amen. God bless you. Good morning, my Emmanuel family, and all the saints of God. Great is his faithfulness. Great 
is his faithfulness, Lord, unto me. You know, God has promised always to be with us with his presence and his peace. But sometimes we're not always aware of that. We don't always feel his presence. And we don't always involve ourselves with his peace. But I tell you today that God's presence and his peace has been with me throughout this pandemic, throughout this COVID-19 season that we are in right now. So I testify to you, if you will draw nigh unto God, he indeed will draw nigh unto you. As most of you know, I am a very busy person, but you know, I've only been out of my house one time in the last four weeks, I've only moved my car one time, and that's so unlike Margaret. But I can tell you one thing, I have treasured the peace of God. It is difficult when you live alone. It's difficult when you don't have family that you want to interact with, to hug, to kiss, um, all of those things that we are not allowed to do right at this time. But I can tell you with assurance that the presence of God has meant so much to me. And I have savored the peace that he's given. The songwriter says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. But I tell you today, because he lives, I can face the challenges of this day. So I encourage you to be blessed, to look unto God who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Happy Resurrection Sunday. message. You all know it. Uh, the words to which our blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation and purchased by God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. Hallelujah. This is my song. I'll be praising my Savior all the day long. Join with me. Amen. my 
This is my story. That's my story. Amen. And that's my song. A Amen. That I am blessed beyond measure because of a God who loves us. At this time, we're going to ask Minister Pemberton if she would uh, share our Old Testament lesson, uh, Psalm, the 46th chapter, uh, beginning, uh, 46th Psalm, rather, uh, beginning at verses uh, 1 through 11. Praise God, to whom all blessings flow. Christ is risen indeed. Happy Resurrection Sunday, everyone. I'll be reading the Old Testament lesson, Psalms 46, in its entirety. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will we not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, see law. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right early. The heathen raged, kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge today. Ha! Behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he has made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow, and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still, and know 
that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Amen. Amen. We'll have our New Testament lesson, uh, John uh, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18, uh, read by Minister Keith Slade. John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Praise the Lord. Happy Resurrection Sunday to everyone today. Hear it from the New the NIV version. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, I'm sorry, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked at the, in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked, they asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out, in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go and say it to my mother, my brothers, and tell them, I am ascending to the Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them, and he had said these things to her. The word of God for the people of God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, at this time, as we prepare our hearts to receive what thus saith the Lord, I, I ask that you would pray, 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 pray for preacher, pray uh, that the Lord would speak to, to me, pray that the Lord would also speak to you. Amen. That we all would be open and receptive to what thus saith the Lord. Uh, as we prepare, uh, there, there's a, uh, another great hymn of meditation.
name of the Lord in this place. Amen. We bless God because he loved us first. Amen. 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 If you have your, your Bibles, join with me in this, this gospel according to John, the 20th chapter, uh, and we will lay anchor at verse 6. John chapter 20, and we will begin at verse 6. Hear it from the New Living Bible translation. It reads, Then Simon Peter arrived and went inside. He also noticed the linen wrappings there, while the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. Then the disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For until then, they still didn't understand the scripture that said Jesus must rise from the dead. I, I want to talk to us this morning um, uh, as we continue to move faith forward from this, this subject, uh, being empty ain't all that bad. Being empty isn't all that bad. When, when we think about being empty, we don't necessarily think of, of it being a good thing. Especially now, during this pandemic, an empty refrigerator is not a good thing. An empty wallet is not a good thing. An empty bank account is not a good thing. And sure enough, an empty life without Christ is not a good thing. Uh, as a matter of fact, promises, promises, uh, many of us have encountered empty promises, promises that are empty, not, not a good thing. Uh, you, you know, you, you my boy, you, you, you my girl, I, I, I've got your back and, and I'm with you through the thick and thin, but when things get too thick, I, you, you know, they, they know where to be found. Empty promises, that's, uh, you, you know, I'm talking about being empty. And the truth be told, the world is full of empty promises. But the good news is, when it comes to our God, he never makes empty promises. God does, doesn't give promises uh, full of emptiness. Rather, he gives emptiness that is full of promise. And, and that's really what we see in our text this morning. The promises of resurrection that, that are marked by the emptiness of three things. Uh, you've got an empty cross, you've got an empty tomb, and then you have some empty burial clothes. And the fact that all three of them are empty assures us that Jesus is alive and the promises of God are real. Oh yeah, because God promised to save us through his only uh, only begotten son and because the cross could not hold him because the tomb could not contain him and because those burial clothes were not needed we can be sure of the fulfillment of God's promise in our lives a amen so look here's here's the scene it's early in the morning and Mary Magdalene is on her way to the tomb where Jesus was buried. The one she watched die a horrible death. The one she had followed at, as he was carried to the tomb by Joseph and Nicodemus. She had watched as Jesus' body was placed in that tomb. And she had watched as that stone was rolled over the entrance and sealed the tomb. Now, as, as she is on her way to the tomb with tears in her eyes, she stops and looks off in a distance because just outside of the city was still standing the horrible reminder of that bad situation. They on top of that hill the locals called Golgotha or the place 
of the skull stood three crosses because yesterday was the Sabbath and no one had removed them. So there they stood as an empty reminder of everything that took place on Friday. And as I looked, I saw uh, the blood stains from the, the crown of thorns that were pushed on Jesus' head. And as I looked, I saw the stains on the ends of the crossbars that uh, came from the nails that were driven in his hands. As I looked, I saw the beam that was soaked with blood from the bruises that were on his back and bruises that came when the soldiers beat him with a, a, a cat uh, of nine tails. And as I looked, I saw the stains from the blood that poured from his side when the soldier ran and pierced him through his side to see if he was in fact dead. And he was. There was no question about it. The, he was dead. The soldiers knew it. The, the Romans knew it. The Jews knew it. We all knew it because we all watched him die. And, and when I saw when I saw that cross, Lord have mercy, it, it took me back to that horrible scene. Well, 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 church, can I, can I tell you this morning, I, I, I want to take you back because Jesus' life, his death, and his resurrection has been debated for centuries. And folk, can I tell you, have been trying to keep Jesus dead for a long time. And, and all because they want to deny the reality that God is real and they refuse to believe in his son. Folk don't want you to even pray in the name of Jesus. Folk don't want you to talk about him because they are in denial. Today I declare that same spirit that motivated the crowd to cry out crucify him back then is still present today. Yeah, people still want to kill Jesus off. Uh, people, as a matter of fact, still want to relegate who he is. He, he's, just, he's just another prophet. No, no, no. People want to deny the power uh, of the very Son of God. Yeah, they, 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 no long, they, they, they declare that no longer is Jesus relevant. Lord have mercy, especially in this modern day world. And they believe, and, and they believe that a belief in him is foolishness. Lord have mercy. Today, I, I tell you, folk are still trying to kill Jesus off, even by silencing his message. Yeah, but I stopped by to tell you this morning, you can't kill Jesus off. No, you, you can't kill the Lamb of God who was slain from the foundation of the world. You you can't kill uh, the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. You can't kill the one mediator between God and man, the stone that the builders reject. You can't kill Jesus, for he himself declared that no man takes my life, but I lay it down. You can't kill Jesus. He's alive and he's well. Hallelujah. Yeah. And let me tell you, that empty cross and that empty tomb and those empty grave clothes are all evidence that Jesus lives. Yeah, yeah. And because of all of them, uh, they are empty uh, of Jesus. They are also full of promises for each and every one of us. The promise of that empty cross and that empty tomb and those empty grave clothes is that for us, we now uh, stand forgiven because Jesus paid it all. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was on the cross that Jesus paid the penalty for all of our sins. I say all of our sins, our, our sins, not his sins. Uh, but our sins, yeah, uh, not, not, not his sins, our sins, yeah. He was wounded for our transgressions, and he, he was bruised for 
sorry, you nicotine. And can I tell you this morning, all of us need to fess up to the sin problem that we have. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, don't, don't you think that, that, that you don't have a sin problem? Yeah, yeah. If, if, if you got an issue with telling the truth, that's evidence that you got a sin problem. Yeah. If, if, if it's hard for you to be loving and kind and to show compassion to, to others, that's evidence that you got a sin problem. Because sin ain't just about drinking, cussing, stealing, and killing. No, when you can't love and treat your brother and sister right, that's sin. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. When you when you're more concerned about yourself than you are about uh, others who are struggling and in need, that is sin. Sin, sin, sin is, is whatever is that you do or that we do that is not pleasing to God. And, and, and we all need to fess up. But, but folk don't want to talk about sin just like they don't want to talk about Jesus. Sin is a dirty word and an unpopular subject in our society today. As a matter of fact, it's a word uh, for many that's not politically correct. Yeah, because when you start telling folk the word of God and the fact that they aren't living right based upon the word of God, their response is, you can't judge me. Well, can I tell you I ain't judging you. The Bible says that we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the only person who has ever lived a sinless life is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Everybody else has failed. And here's the problem. Here's the problem. The problem here is that the Bible declares that the soul that sinneth shall surely die. The result of sin is death. The result of sin is God's punishment. The result of sin is eternal damnation. Uh, the result of sin is that we are all we were on our way to hell. But hallelujah, thanks be to God. That's why we celebrate Resurrection Sunday because of that empty cross and because of that empty tomb and because of those empty grave clothes. I'm a beneficiary of grace and mercy. Yeah, because the Bible says that God demonstrated His love to us in that while I was yet in sin, Christ died for me. Well, well yeah, he, he didn't wait for me to clean up my act uh, while I was still dirty, while I was still nasty, while I was still stinking, while I was still stuck in the mire, while I still had the residue of alcohol on my breath and crack on my lips. He died for me. Jesus did it. Nobody else did it. Yeah, not Moses, not Abraham, not David, not mama, nor daddy. Nobody but Jesus. Yeah, yeah. And a matter of fact, the Bible tells us there's no other name given under heaven by which we can call, which we can all be saved, but the name of Jesus. Yeah, and, 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 and church, let me tell you, that cross, that empty cross, where his blood was shed for our salvation. Because before that Friday, God could open up the book on all of us. Lord have mercy. He, he could look up your name, my name, and, and there written beside of all of our names were the words guilty. Lord have mercy. Guilty of of lying, guilty of stealing, guilty of sleeping around, guilty of being a hell raiser. I mean, guilty of everything that that uh, everything but the right thing. But hallelujah, when Jesus died on that cross, God transferred our account to His name. Yeah, whereby on that day He wrote across every name of every believer with the blood of Jesus paid in full. You are forgiven, yeah. Uh, okay, all right. Look, well, well, back to Sister Mary Magdalene here. Here, Sister Mary, after uh, uh, pausing briefly to view the cross, she continues on her way down the path headed 
to the tomb. And it's in Matthew and Mark's gospel uh, that they record that as 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 she and the other Mary they 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 they, they go and they ask uh, look they, they 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 ask each other well well who who gonna move this this stone away and and, and and they have good reason to be worried because it was a huge stone and and the Romans had put a seal on it so that no one was allowed to move it without their permission but. Despite what they were thinking, they keep on anyway. In fact, that's a word for us right now. No matter what you're thinking, no matter what news reports, no matter what reports you got in the midst of this pandemic, you just keep on moving forward with Jesus, knowing that God has got you in his hand. Well, look, the Bible says that as they got closer, they see the soldiers. Uh, but, but when they see them, they see them all unconscious on the ground and the stone being pushed away to the side. And, and, and Mark's and, and Matthew's gospel tell us that an angel tells them, look, don't, don't y'all be scared. For, for I know who, I know y'all looking for Jesus. Yeah, yeah, he was crucified, but, but he ain't here. He has risen just like he said. And church, can I tell you, that empty tomb holds a tremendous promise for each and every one of us. That empty tomb is, is the evidence of a resurrected Jesus and the promise to every one of us that we too will be raised unto new life to all who confess Jesus and believe on his name. The Bible says we'll not perish but have everlasting life. And church, the, 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 the tomb was empty because Jesus is alive. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I say the tomb was empty because Jesus is alive. And, and the promise to us is because Jesus lives, we live also. Because Jesus was victorious. Lord have mercy. We too have victory in Jesus. That, that's the second promise found in the text. But, but there, there's one more promise here that I want you to see. And that's the promise of those empty burial clothes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Here it is that, that after Mary discovers that the tomb is empty, she, she immediately goes back to the apostles and tell them of what she has discovered. And when they hear the news, Peter, the Bible says, and one of the other disciples, they immediately take off running, headed towards the tomb. And Peter, you know, when you read the Bible, we find out that Peter was kind of slow. He couldn't run very fast. And, and, and he, 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 yeah, yeah. And the other disciple got there before him. And, and, and he stopped the, on the outside of the tomb and took a look on the inside. But y'all know old Peter, yeah. When Peter got there with no hesitation, the Bible says he went right on in. And when he got in, he noticed that the linen wrappings uh, laying there, Lord have mercy, but he did not see Jesus. He noticed the cloth that had covered Jesus' head, but he didn't see Jesus. And he notices that the cloth uh, the napkin, if, if, if you will, was, was that covered Jesus' head was folded up nice and neat and laying on the side. Lord, have mercy. Uh, well, let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me help you understand this. Look, look, I think I told you before, in order to understand the significance of the folded napkin, you, 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 you have to understand a little bit about the tradition of the day. The folded napkin had, it, had to do with the master and his servant. Yeah, when the servant set the dinner table for the master, he made sure that 
that it was exactly like the master wanted it. Yeah. And the servant would wait because he dared not touch the table until the master had completely finished his meal. N now, if, if the master was finished eating, y'all better hear me. Yeah. He would get up from the table. He would wipe his fingers. He would wipe his mouth. He would ball the napkin up and put it on the table. Yeah, and that would serve uh, at notice to the servant that the master was finished and could clear the table. But if the master got up from the table, folded his napkin, Lord Hammer, and laid it beside the plate, it was an indication that the master was not finished and that he was coming back again. Oh, Lord have mercy. I stopped by this morning to tell somebody that folded napkin in the text, yeah, in this tomb meant two things, that Jesus is still alive and two, he's coming back again, yeah. Well, look, as I hasten to my close this morning, look, here the text says in verse 8 that when the disciples who had reached the tomb First, uh, they 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 uh, they also went in and they saw and belie believed. Because I told you that uh, the, the, the the disciples uh, went ahead of of, of 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 Peter, but they didn't go in. It wasn't until afterwards that they went in. And the Bible says after it was then that they saw and they believed. Because until then they still had not understood the scriptures that declared Jesus was going to rise from the dead. Here, the disciple went in, he went in, and he saw and he believed. Can I tell y'all something this morning? That that every now and then, look, my advice to you is every now and then, you, make, you need to make an appointment to check the rock. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, the rock I'm talking about is Jesus. Yeah, the chief cornerstone, the rock of our salvation, the rock of ages cleft for me. I'll rock in a weary land. Every now and then, you need to make an appointment to check the rock because when you check the rock, you'll find out that God keeps his promises. Yeah, you check the rock and you'll find joy at the rock. You'll find healing for your soul at the rock. You'll find victory over your life's issues if you check the rock. Look, here the disciples, the disciple when he went in and he saw, he believed. But can I tell you also this morning, I ain't got to see it <laughs> to believe it. No, no. The, as a matter of fact, the Bible declares, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Blessed are those who recognize who Jesus is and recognize what he's done for us. Yeah, I don't have to see him to bless him. Yeah, just the mention of his name and something starts to happen on the inside. That's why you can show up to the Baptist church and it doesn't have to be on Resurrection Sunday. It can be on the first, second, third, fourth, even the fifth Sunday. But when he started talking about how Jesus died and how he was crucified and how he got up early Sunday morning, something starts happening on it. True believers can't sit still, can't be quiet, and can't hold your peace when you start talking. I mean, if you know that you were lost and on your way to hell, but the Lord saved you. At the mention of his name, you can't hold your peace. I mean, every time you think about that Friday on a skull-shaped hill, how Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. Every time you think about that blood so cross and how they hung him high and stretched him wide and how he hung his head and died for us, something happens on the inside. Here the text says that the disciples, when they saw, they believed. But I don't have to see it to believe it because I know he lives. I, I say, I know he lives. Yeah, yeah. I, I like to say, I serve a risen Savior. Yeah, he's in this world today. I, I know he's living whatever men may say. Yeah, because I see, I know he lives because I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. You ask me how I know he lives because he lives. 
He lives within my soul. Amen. He walks with me. He, he talks with me. Hallelujah. He, he lives. God, we bless you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord God, that, that you do live. God, we thank you, Lord God, that, that you suffered, you bled, you died. God, to save each and every one of us. God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, and we celebrate today the victory, God, that you, you, you won over death, hell, and the grave. And we celebrate it because we, too, have victory in you. We thank you. I pray, Lord God, for all those who are hearing this word and hearing this message. God, I, 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 I pray, Lord God, that you would move on hearts, especially of those who don't know you in the pardon of their sins. We thank you, Lord God, that, that you loved us all so much that you sent your only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have eternal life. And we thank you, God, that salvation is available and today's a good day to get saved. We thank you all we have to do according to your word is confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that you raised Jesus from the dead and verily thou shalt be saved. We thank you. God, we, I lift up God. All, the, the, all of my brothers and sisters, God, who, who are impacted, all of us, God, who are impacted by this, this pandemic, God, I thank you, Lord God, that you, you have not left the building. You, you know where we all are. You know what we all are going through, God. I, 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 I lift up those who have suffered loss, the families. I pray your comfort. I pray your peace. And I pray for your divine healing right now, God. I, I declare you, I declare you, 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 you're speaking to us right now, Lord God. And, 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 and even through all of this, God, you, you, you're bidding for those who have drifted away from you to come on back to you, God. Our nation and our world, Lord God, even our leadership, we have gone so far away from you. But I thank you, God, that you give us the opportunity, God, to draw nearer to you. God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God. Continue to heal, God. We thank you that there's still healing in your wings. There's still a bomb in healing. So, God, touch lives right now. And touch those who have been diagnosed, God. You, you, you know who they are, Lord God. We, we thank you, Lord God, that, that a diagnosis, Lord God, the, that, you know, it, it, it's just a diagnosis. We thank you, Lord God, that you're the great physician, God. And you got the final say in all of our lives. So, so God, we trust you. We trust you. Help, help us, Lord, to stand strong and stand firm in our faith and our belief in you, God, knowing, God, that we can put all of our trust in you. We thank you. Bless us, God, is our prayer. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. At this time, at this time, you, we, we, you have an opportunity, even though we are not in the same place. Amen. You, you have the opportunity, amen, to, to give, amen, to give. And Sister Fanny is there, and she's going to share uh, the opportunity that we have for you to be able to give, worship through giving, amen. Sister Fanny to hit her mic. Uh, hit your mic, Sister Fanny, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll get you. Amen. We have Easy Tithe. A -a Amen. Our secure giving app. A -a Amen. You can log on to, to give your, 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 your offerings to, um, to the church. Amen. As we continue to, 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 to do ministry. Amen. Also, this you, you, can, you can mail your, your offerings. And this coming Tuesday, um, you're, you'll be able to do two things, and I'll speak more about it uh, shortly. Uh, between 12 and 3 o'clock, amen, um, that, that, that is our, 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 the time we have designated uh, uh, for giving and pickup. Uh, the first thing, you can, you can uh, if, you're, if you're unable to use our, our Easy Tide app, and you're unable to mail your, yours in, but you're able to get out, you can drop, come on by the church, amen, and drop it off between the hours of 12 and 3. Also, uh, you can you can also be able to drop off perishable food items. Uh, that you'll, we'll also be distributing um, groceries during that hour for those persons who are in need between 12 and 3. So, if, and, and if there, if you are one or need, you can come and also pick up during that hour. You can drop off and you can pick up during that hour. 
A amen. Amen. God bless you. Also, this coming week, this coming week, um, to, uh, Tuesday, that's Tuesday the 14th, but, um, Tuesday night prayer call, amen, at 6 p.m. You can dial in on our conference call number, amen. And then we, we will gather, we'll continue our noonday, uh, our noonday worship, amen, our midweek fill up at 12 o'clock, amen, live on Facebook, amen. And then on Thursday morning at 6 a.m., uh, we our conference call line. Join us in prayer. A amen. And then on Sunday uh, at 11 a.m., uh, our unity worship service with our communion observance. A amen. A amen. We, 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 we ask that you would join with us um, and be a part and take part. At, at this time, I'm, I'm, Elder, Elder Townsend is... Is, is, is Peter, I, I, I want uh, Elder Townsend to, uh, to, 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 to have a word of prayer. There, there are a number of persons that I indicated earlier who have um, called and, and are on our sick list, uh, sick and shedding list. Uh, I need you to pray for uh, Sister Paulette Hunter and family, uh, Brother Richard Winstead, Sister Faye Slade and the Slade family passing of, of, of a sister, uh, continue to lift up Sister Regina Edwards, um, the Scott family, in, in the passing of, of their stepmother, and uh, the passing of their best friend, a uh, young, young lady. Um, we want to continue to keep Sister Barbara Blunt lifted up in prayer, and Sister Karen Love, um, for her healing and her strength, as well as the loss of her brother-in-law. We want to uh, keep uh, Deacon uh, Sylvester and, and, and Sister Betty in, in, in prayer, a amen, not only for the healing, but in the passing of their, their great-grandbaby. Uh, we want to keep Sister Alfreda and, and Mike Hester in prayer, as well as uh, Reverend and Sister Spearman. We want to keep them in prayer. Uh, Sister Le Celestine Green, uh, that the Lord will continue to comfort and strengthen her in this season of loss. Sister Edna Ward. Nancy Munlin, uh, Sister Tiffany and Nathan Mafal, Jeff Woods, Bob and Renee Garrison, uh, Andrea Parson and family, Jeanette Wright, uh, Tori Carter, Jocelyn and uh, Warren Fletcher, Paul and Cheryl Galloway, Marjorie Cunningham, Brother Joe Battle, uh, Sister Laura Person, uh, Brother Suave Scott, uh, Brother Joe Lyons, uh, Deacon Oliver Early, uh, Sister Gladys Raper, Sister Melja Harrell, uh, Sister Carolyn Petty Martin, Brother Robert Gould, uh, Reverend uh, Rudolph Keyes, the pastor, Emeritus, Mrs. Deaconess Austin, um, Brother Alonzo Brown, Sister Delilah Holmes, uh, Deacon and Deaconess Dixon, uh, Brother Warren, Sister Estelle Bradfield, uh, Brother Costa, uh, Sister Katie Arnold, Sister Mary Harrell, Sister Louise King, and Sister Shirley Harvey, Sister Helen Walker. There are many that are on our sick and shedding list. But even though all those names that I call, God knows about every last one of them. And God is able to reach. God has not forgotten. God God is, is able to comfort. God is able to meet needs. God is able to do any and everything but fail. So if you will join us in a word of prayer. Amen. Elder Townsend. <clears throat> Lord. You are our dwelling place, and we thank you for it. Lord, we come before you this morning, this afternoon, oh God, giving you praise, giving you honor, giving you glory, God, for what you did for us at that. God, we rejoice today because nothing, nothing, nothing could hold you down. The enemy thought that your power would be defeated, but that didn't work. Mm -hmm. He thought that your power and your love would be removed, but that didn't work. And God, we thank you that early this morning you got up with all power in your hand. You got up, God, and showed us your love towards us. You got up, oh God, and you let us know that we may be going through something, but you're still right there with us. You have never left us nor forsaken us. 
and we say thank you. Lord, we lift up those names that Pastor has called out. God, you know about each and every last one of them. You know every hair on their head. And God, we lift them up to you right now, God, for your finger of love, your finger of healing to touch right now in the blessed name of Jesus the Christ. Lord, we come to this altar now, God, a virtual altar, but it's still an altar, God. And we come, God, delivering our burdens unto you. God, we come knowing that you did everything just for us, and we thank you. We come now, God, asking that whatever is burning us down, that you would remove it, that you would heal us, that you would deliver us, and you would set us free from whatever it is, oh God. And then, God, you will fill us with your peace, your love, and you're granting us the, the mercy, new mercies each and every day. And for this, God, we say thank you. Lord, you've been faithful to us over a few things, over just a few things, God. And God, we thank you for that. We thank you, oh God, how you you, 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 you turn blinded eyes from you, oh God. And in this season of pandemic, God, we, we pray as your remnant, oh God, that you are turning people back to you because you already said in your word that you, oh God, if we would turn, if your people, your people, we are all your people, the saved and the unsaved, oh God. So God, we want to be able to turn to you, to look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith in this critical time. God, we lift up those who are tested positive and who have the coronavirus. We lift up those first responders, oh God. We lift up doctors and nurses, oh God, who are putting their lives, mm, their lives in danger each and every day because they don't know, God, if, if the virus will attack them. But God, we thank you and give praise to you for allowing them, oh God, uh, for allowing them to say, yes, I will serve. Yes, I will be that person. Who will serve mankind, God? It takes a special person, a special heart, because you have to love people, and God, I believe they have to love you in order to serve like they are saved. God, I lift up the firemen. I lift up the EMTs to you right now. I lift up every church, God, who, 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 who is having virtual service. I, I lift up every church, God, who's having the kids people go to the worship house. I lift them up to you right now in the name of Jesus. I lift up each and every member of Emmanuel Baptist Church right now in the name of Jesus. You know, God, what we stand in need of. I lift up the global church family to you, God. God, we don't know how long, how long we will be in our homes, but we do know that you are there with us, right beside us. And when we don't feel like we can take the next step, God, we thank you, God, that you're carrying us you're carrying us. God, we bless your name today because you're worthy to be praised. We bless your name today, oh God, because you are our Alpha and our Omega. We bless your name today, God, because you are our strength, strength like none other. We bless your name today, oh God, because if it had not been for your, the Lord on our side, we don't know where we would be, God. We just don't know, God, so God, we give your name praise. We give your name glory. We give your name honor because you are the great I am. And we love you so much, God. We love you, oh God, and we want you to know that we call upon your name daily. Daily, God. Because we know that our strength and all our help comes from you. We bless your name this day, God. And as we have heard a mighty word, a mighty word from heaven today, let us not just hide it in our heart, but let us apply it to our lives, God, in our daily walk with you. God, as we have this downtime, as we are in our homes, God, we thank you for this time that we get now, God, to, to worship you in spirit and in truth evermore, without the distractions of the world. And we praise your name for it. We thank you, God, for time to do things that we just haven't had time to do, God. We thank you, oh God, for, for your healing power this day. We thank you, oh God, for your love. We thank you, oh God, for your peace. And we thank you, oh God, that you are the risen 
on the wheel. And we were all Thank you. 